So now we're going to talk about what are called perineal plastic diseases. And uh, one example of a perineal plastic disease is, comes from pituitary adenoma. Remember, a pituitary adenoma is a uh, tumor of the pituitary gland. And um, in some cases, the, the tumor-producing cell, the dividing cell, is actually a cell that secretes ACTH. And when that happens, that produces Cushing's disease. C Cushing's syndrome um, can also occur from, in, and is actually more common than Cushing's disease, and it comes when there is a medication that results in too much ACTH. So another example of a perineoplastic disease, and this is a disease where it's not the tumor, but something that the tumor produces that is causing the problem. Another one is called Lambert-Eaton syndrome. And Lambert-Eaton syndrome is caused by a small cell, uh, a small lung cell carcinoma, which produces an antibody that attacks calcium channels at the neuromuscular junction. And this produces a muscle weakness. And we'll, we'll talk about that when we talk about um, neural signaling. Now, a, another one, Another perineoplastic disease was discovered, uh, or, or a family of these, was discovered around 2007. Um, and a particularly uh, um, compelling account of a person with just uh, one of these diseases is provided by Susanna um, Kahalan, um, Brain on Fire. And this is, this is a great book. It is such an interesting um, story, which luckily ends well. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. So what Susanna Cahalan had, which was a few years after it was discovered, was an anti-NMDA receptor encephalopathy. Now, at the time that it was discovered, it was thought that these were all caused by an ovarian teratoma by a substance produced by an ovarian teratoma. So that would make it an, a perineoplastic disease. Since that time, um, it has become evident that a large proportion of the individuals with this disease don't have a teratoma, don't have an ovarian teratoma. They are instead, they have an autoimmune version of this anti-NMDA receptor encephalopathy. And that was in indeed the case in Susanna Collins' um, uh, in her case, she did not have a teratoma. She had an autoimmune reaction. So what happens? Somehow these antibodies get into the central nervous system, and in the case of the anti-NMDA receptor encephalopathy, it's, it's, uh, the antibody that got in is attacking the NMDA receptor, which, we, which we'll see later, is um, one of the most common and, and absolutely one of the most critical uh, neurotransmitter receptors for glutamate, uh, a receptor for glutamate tra uh, neurotransmission. And when you attack those NMDA receptors, uh, basically it causes psychosis. So this is, this is something that um, is mimicked by taking uh, ketamine, which is also uh, uh, known as a street drug called Special K, um, and this brings on, uh, it's also used, special, ketamine is used as a model for schizophrenia. So it's given to rodents to model schizophrenia in order to understand schizophrenia better. In Susanna Cahalan's case, this, her symptoms started with a very low level situation where, where she just felt that her apartment wasn't clean, and so she cleaned it. And then she still felt it wasn't clean, and she cleaned it again. And then she still didn't feel it was clean, and she bagged up everything. And she still didn't feel it was clean, and she called in a, an exterminator. And the exterminator said, there's nothing, there's no infestation. She says, I don't care. You have to exterminate. I know there is. So she essentially went psychotic. This was not the way she normally was. That got misdiagnosed and misdiagnosed and misdiagnosed, in large part perhaps because it was early days and these anti-NMD or these anti, the, these autoimmune receptor um, encephalopathies. But eventually she started to have seizures and that um, 
she, she recovered from those. She doesn't have those seizures anymore. In, 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 in one way of thinking about it, those seizures did her a favor because it, 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 um, it made physicians take this psychotic break as something beyond, um, beyond just uh, a psychotic break, as something that, that was uh, addressable and fixable. And indeed, they figured out that she had an anti-NMDA receptor encephalopathy. And then the, the goal is, and it was accomplished in Susanna Cahalan, is to just give supportive therapy as you get rid of these, uh, these receptors. Uh, I'm sorry, these antibodies. So now what we know is that there's a whole family of these autoimmune receptor um, encephalopathies. The most common one remains the anti-NMDA receptor encephalopathy. Um, one of the interesting questions uh, about this is how do those uh, antibodies get into the central nervous system? So the central nervous system shouldn't have antibodies. It sh it, it, that they shouldn't cross the blood-brain barrier. So one of the questions that people have, have been banding about is, does the, is there a breakdown in the blood-brain barrier that precedes this? Is that a start of the disease or is that a consequence of the disease? So the chicken or egg of, in, in the role of the blood-brain barrier breakdown is um, currently being debated. In any case, these are an emerging uh, set of uh, encephalopathies. You um, are, it's increasingly likely that you will see these uh, in either uh, patients or in friends. Um, and it's important to recognize them early. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to end up, uh, we're going to finally end up this section on um, the nervous system by talking about neurodegeneration.